The Senate unveiled a bipartisan stopgap uh, bill that would keep the government funded through mid-November. Uh, still, there's no guarantee the bill will be able to pass the House. Uh, join us now on the latest, including some procedural moves last night, is Republican Congressman Kelly Armstrong. He's been working closely uh, with leadership on negotiations. And um, I, I noted earlier, Congressman, it's good to have you on, uh, that Thanks I don't know me. where any of these things in the House, we just mentioned the Senate, I don't know where things go in, in the House, because a lot of those priorities that you did move, Finally, early was it? What, what time did it finally happen last night? I know you guys were. You look okay. Did you get some sleep? When did it finally move? Those yeah, I got the, some. <laughs> go ahead. We got a we got, we got a rule vote later last night around 7:30, and we started working on amendments for appropriations bills. Uh, we should get through those sometime today or tomorrow, and then we'll take the final vote on four appropriations bills, which make up about 73 percent of all government funding. Right, and, and you finally got. It's a tough. Uh, Road to hoe. I mean, you, you. I think it was 216, 212. You only lost one, one Republican, but it was tough getting for for the speaker to finally even get that done. But it, it finally happened. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk a lot about math. We're running two trillion dollar deficit. We're not at war. We're not in a pandemic. Uh, Thirty three trillion in debt. But the math we need is 218 to get these things across the floor. And even if we get them moved, I don't think anybody thinks we're going to have 12 appropriations bills reconciled with the Senate by Friday. So, I, I mean, the, I've always thought the position is a conservative CR, put House Republicans in the best position possible. I think the border is the fight we should take. We have a rare opportunity as Republicans in D.C. right now to win both politically and policy on an issue. And I still think that's the best path forward. You know, Congressman, maybe the only thing that could turn American uh, public opinion against doing something about the border is closing down the government. It, it always seems like, you know, you're going to snatch defeat from the from the jaws of, of, of victory again. Does it has it ever helped the Republicans in the next election to to be responsible for for closing down the government? And it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I don't think so. And that's why we worked so closely with our friends from the Freedom Caucus over the last two weeks to negotiate what we thought was a really strong position, 8% uh, cut to non-defense, non-veterans, discretionary uh, funding for 30 days and implementing uh, HR2 provisions, which would immediately give our U.S. Uh, officials and law enforcement at the border operation control again. I mean, this is a fight that's going on in Chicago and New York and Massachusetts and New Mexico, and you right. don't have to take Republicans' words for it. You can ask the Democratic but mayors. You don't, it's, it's, if, it's where if, we should go. The American king, people are with us. If you were king, and, and I think Speaker McCarthy does not want to shut down the government. You don't want to shut down the government, do no. you? That's not, that's, not the, that's not the outcome that you want, but that's probably going to happen. And it, the Senate bill, that's going nowhere. And th th this bill, if you finally get to one, has no chance of passing... Uh, the Democrat-controlled Senate. No, I mean, if I was king, I'd go. I'd build a DeLorean. I'd go back in time a week, and I'd pass the conservative <laughs> version of this, so we could get to the negotiating table and say, "Hey, listen, you have a choice. You can shut down the border or shut down the government." It's not happen, I still though. think it's our best position. Right. Every day we get closer to a shutdown, our leverage goes away, and yeah, it's really frustrating because I want us to pass all our appropriations bills. I think these are the most conservative packages that have come in, come off the floor of the House in my lifetime. But the reality is, is we are heading towards a continuing resolution, whether that's to stave off a shutdown or to reopen government. And I just don't know why my conservative colleagues wouldn't, wouldn't want us right, in the best right, negotiating right. position possible. Yeah, you're, you're, I think you're pointing in, in the right direction now. I mean, are Democrats right when they say what was arrived at a couple of months ago, uh, they were on board then and, and now they've kind of reneged and they're, they're not even agreeing to, they want another what, they want another how much cut, another trillion cut or something? They, they, they're mad about the last one, so they're going to take it out and, uh, on this one? Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize we talk about the debt ceiling negotiation, but uh, both sides blew that up almost immediately before the ink was even dry on that. Senate Democrats were talking about massively going over the number for uh, supplemental packages. And at the same time, we had people on our side that wanted to go back to the limit, save, grow numbers. I think we always end up at the negotiated debt ceiling deal when we get there. That's the reason with divided government. But a good friend of mine who has uh, been here a lot longer than I said, you know, the pain is inevitable, the suffering is optional. And of course, we're, gonna, we're working our way towards that. And I, I, I just commend the leadership with trying to get us something to get us at the negotiating table.
nobody wants the government, uh, the, whether it stays open or not, to be like that speaker vote. <laughs> Congressman, you know, no one wants to watch that. Well, Remember no. those 15 votes? And, and then it just looks like, it looks like Republicans are in charge and it looks like they can't really govern when, when this happens, right? Yeah. And we have, two, we have two Air Force bases in North Dakota. This isn't a political issue when our airmen and women start missing paychecks. Right. That's a real problem and it has right. nothing to do with politics.